Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. We appreciate your viewership. Let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard, and hardworking crew taking care of everyday comfort needs. High, high 79, low 69. What, what a nice day. We'll have some rain coming tonight. It looks like in parts of the Panhandle, but uh, it's going to be the rest of the week. going to be a little bit cooler, but we'll know a lot more about it tomorrow. The big thing is the water temperature at the end of the period this morning is reading at 69.6. So if you round it off, it'll be at 70. So we're right. This is going to be, like I said last week, that temperature is going to be so crucial this week, and it, it really, just as we predicted, got right up there, right at 70 degrees at the end of the pier. That's one steady place we can always keep up with what's going on. I know the, the currents and all the different places that may up and, go up and down, but we've talked about it before. 70 at the end of the pier. Let's take a look at our, the big, the big thing on our river readings, I was just looking at it. Of course, the part two is by Panama City Coca-Cola. Uh, they finally, they've leveled off. Look at the Apalachicola Blunstown. It's right at 12 foot. It's still high, but it looks like it's level. Choctatchee Caribbean, uh, 6.5, and got a steady, uh, just both of them look steady. But the thing about it, on the Choctatchee, it's going to, you can, it's pretty well predictable, but a lot of times uh, up there at the Jim Woodruff Dam at Chattahoochee, you know, it looks like okay for that, and all of a sudden they open up all those gates and it changes, boom. So it, a lot of times, it, you know, uh, it, it will change, but the prediction of it, is, is most of the time pretty pretty level. Uh, tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Good strong tide this week. Check out this week. Well, low this morning at 3.20 and a high this afternoon at 4.04. And the wind becoming south, southwest at about 15. I thought March was over, but it's still blowing. I want to say a special good morning to Eric Seymour. Got to spend some time, saw him this past weekend at a function and uh, one of our loyal viewers up there in the Sand Hills. Appreciate your viewership, Eric, you and your lovely wife. Let's take a break, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. It looks like a beautiful spring week all ahead of us, so uh, make some plans to do some outdoor activities and it's gonna be really nice. I have all a conglomeration of pictures, but most of them pertain, they all pertain to the outdoors, but uh, this first one over here at Choctatchee River, they've caught some nice fish, a steady, been a steady bite this spring. This is Roy Rushing. And I've uh, got a nice mess of brim right there. Good job, Roy. Good job there. I wanted to show this only because uh, it's interesting, but I've, always, I've been to this exact spot. Uh, this is down, let me show you on the map. This, this is uh, Lake Okeechobee, the north end of Lake Okeechobee. And uh, Chip and Jill lived down there for a little while, and we and we'd go from Okeechobee over there to Stewart and Port St. Lucie. And this actually, he told me about it before I came down. He said, Dad, you got to ride down this road. This is actually the road, and it's, it's just remarkable. And uh, if you're ever down that neck of the woods, it'd be well worth it to, to check it out. It's about 12 miles, I mean, it's amazing. Okay, Homer and Zachary. Now, when I first look, look at this nice trout. Good job, Herman, and that, that is a fine one right there. Herman's a good fisherman. Got a whole family of fishes. This is interesting, a friend of mine, I posted this, uh, she loved this tree, Camilla Hare Hudson. But I wanted to talk about this a minute because really this is happening all over the Panhandle. This is the same tree, same angle at their house there in Lynn Haven. And you know how the storm messed up all of our trees. I mean, really, but look out there. In my yard, they're coming back like this. It's been a slow process, and it, but it's really been remarkable and that filled out so well. I know Camilla, she says she didn't even mind cleaning out the stuff from a swimming pool just to have that tree back. <laughs> all right, all right, this is always a big deal. Can y'all believe this is the 64th annual Pancake Days? The Qantas Club of Panama City has been doing this, I guess since the 1960s or whatever. So yeah, 1960 they started. So anyways, next week, and I'm certainly gonna go, I might go two mornings. The Pancake, I mean, they stack them up there. And $7 all you can eat, pancake, sausages, and drink. And, and the great thing about it, all the proceeds, 100% of proceeds uh, benefit the children of the world. <laughs> I mean, they do a great job. 
And uh, that would be down, it's right down, right down the road from uh, Fox 28 on 23rd Street, Forest Park Church off Elizabeth Avenue. Joe Eddy, this is interesting. <laughs> Joe said, uh, oh, one I'm rigging out with new interior and flounder lights for Winston Chester's son-in-law, that's Walter. Bo will be seen, seen in some future episodes of Panhandle Outdoors. Wind and Walter are excited about going floundering on St. Joe Bay since they moved down there. And Walter took his boat over there to Joe. I won't show you all the pictures. We'll, we'll show it later. But Joe is just the expert in rigging it out. I would, I used to like do this kind of stuff myself, but I, I, I would go straight to Joe and say, Joe, just fix it. And that's what I told Walter to do. So that's going to be interesting. And uh, Walter's going to be coming and doing some shows from down there. That's good. Okay, I, I just had to share this with you. Hope you don't mind. Spring is here. I'm so excited. I wet my plants. So anyway, hope... I'm glad I didn't offend anybody, but it, I thought it was funny. Leave a bit of Grantham sent this to us. We're talking about catching those big fish at the dam, those stripers. Was well, here Leroy Shiver, and folks, look at that. That is a big fish, and you're talking about fun to catch. Uh, Bill and uh, talked about it before. Those those are strong fish, and you have that current there, and you lose a lot of them. But old Leroy got that one in, and uh, catching and releasing. That's a good good job. Leroy Shiver, the Shiver family. This is goofy here. I, the surf fishing page. Uh, talking about beach. This is over in Perdido Key, because I don't think anybody here in Panhandle will do it. But it says, this dude has nine or ten rods. I want to read the whole thing to you. And, it's, and uh, anyway, this is, re this is really, I mean, this, you got one station here, and the guy counted nine or ten rods. You folks, you don't need that. I know y'all know that, but. I, I didn't think anybody did that anymore. I can understand if you're commercial, and, and the commercial guys don't even do it. But isn't that crazy? So be better than that. Okay. All right. This this is good right here. Uh, oh, I'm gonna come back to I'm gonna come back to about it after after the break. But what, what great pictures and all. Okay. Uh, I, I want to show this real quick. Uh, May second, about a month from now, I, I, I just ran across this. I don't know anything about it, but it's, it's a uh, fly fishing festival. Now, don't it sound good? It's not here in the Panhandle, but right, right across the state line at Gulf Shores at the state park down there. But uh, they have a fly fishing tournament, a films, fly tying. This is really interesting. We want to share this with, with some folks, vendors and everything, and let's see, what did it say what weekend? Like I said, second and fourth. Uh, so that'd be a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, I think. Or maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I I, I would love to say I'd check it out. I just don't know. But if you're over in that neck of the woods and love fly fishing, that'll be something really cool. Okay. Now one or two more. Ricky Ramey, this is he caught this last week on my birthday, March twenty third. What a great picture, Ricky. A nice one. Look at Ramey at Deer Point Lake. Good, good young man. Loves to fish. Donnie Messer got him a nice buck. I mean, I'm sorry, nice, nice bearded, double beard is what I'm looking at. Two beards right there on that big old gobbler. But he did get a nice buck back during hunting season. Donnie is a very good hunter. Okay, we got a good breaking point. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I've got more pictures to show you. If you sent some pictures in, I don't show them right now. I, prom I promise I'll get to them. I have some guests coming in tomorrow talking about the big Spanish mackerel, latest Spanish mackerel tournament this coming weekend. So we'll, we'll uh, I've got a busy week. I do want to share this with you. We talk a lot about uh, nature in itself, and and I uh, love we love bird watching and uh, nature, the whole total nature scene here in Panhandle. And bluebirds are, just seem always to be special. They just first of all they're beautiful, and they just all work together as pairs, and and husband and wife, and all do their their share for the nest. But uh, I have some friends who also have some bluebirds, and one of them, Angie Carpenter, and she is she is really good at it. I mean, she's been. I mean, she'll film them, and her daughter, uh, Crystal uh, Bullock, over at Bay High, they they both have some nice bluebirds every year, nice eggs and nice hatches. So, I wonder. She sent me a text. Uh, her husband Jim Lawson and I see each other a lot, and so here's the text. I want to read the whole thing too. But in gist, this is what it's saying. Hey, Winston, it's Angie. Uh, I watched. I want you to please inform your viewers who have bluebirds about the invasive species of house sparrows. Last year they killed three of my bluebird babies and we couldn't keep them away from our nest box. I did some research and found out all about the battle between the two species, 
house sparrows are invasive and very aggressive. Bluebirds are their competitors and they will destroy their nests and eggs and kill the babies and, and even adult bluebirds if they get a chance. We had to close our nest box last year and trying to do it again this year. While researching, I also discovered the house sparrows are scared of shiny, moving objects and noise. So with that, I have decorated my nest box <laughs> with scary things, okay? Maybe viewers can use this information to help them protect their bluebirds. Last year, although I tried, they got used to the shiny objects and broke into the next box. And uh, anyway, they ended up destroying all five of their bluebird eggs. So here's some pictures of what she put on them. I, I thought how, how creative of her to do this, trying to protect. Uh, this is in her backyard. She's got a squirrel baffle there. And uh, I also, the bluebirds are not scared to go into their nest box, with all the shiny moving decorations. Once that mama starts laying her eggs, she will go back to them regardless of anything. Mother nature and mama instincts kick in. So I never put anything up until mama bluebird started laying her eggs. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna put it here in motion like this. Okay, here we go. In the wind, so anyway, I kept out those uh, house sparrows for a while and they finally got brave enough to go in there. And, and uh, anyway, Angie, thank you so much for uh, we're sharing that with, with us uh, viewers and all because uh, the house sparrows. I know we have a we have a situation where a lot of things are uh, in nature. We don't understand why would why would they want to attack and, and destroy each other's eggs and all be in the same birds. I, I just some things I don't understand. I can't explain it to you. Now I want to share something with you. Uh, oh, in fact, I'm going to show you one more picture. Let's see, that'll pop up. Guess where this is, right here. Our bluebirds laid an egg over Easter week, right before Easter. They laid some, all five eggs. So they're, uh, we keep an eye on it. I, I don't see a lot of house bears yet. So anyway, we're proud, proud of that. Proud of our mama and daddy bluebirds. Now I want to share something with you. It, it's, uh, it's different, I have nothing to do with outdoors. Well it does because it's one of my former students. I got a call uh, uh, several, a couple months back or text, uh, uh, Coach Chester. This is uh, Brittany Morgan Davis. Would you uh, perform my wedding ceremonies? And I, I've always, uh, I said, well, yeah, I, I mean, I said, I, I will, I, because she was just such a sweet girl, and I, just, I, couldn't, tell, I couldn't tell her no, so I text, yeah, I said, I will. Little, I, you know, I've never done it before, so long story, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, going out to the beach, a little 15 minute wedding, and, you know, just going through it and doing, doing it right and all, so I didn't think much of it. Well, <laughs> I didn't want to share this with you, part of my life lately. Uh, I, I had to get my justice, to, uh, well, notary, notary public seal and, and be able to legally do it. Well, that cost a little bit, plus I had to take a three hour test and I, I could have done the test in 20 minutes, but you got to wait on the questions and they won't let you go through it fast. So it, that was aggravating, but I, I laughed all the way through it because I understood and I was doing it for a good cause. So I got it all set up and finally got the stuff in. Well, the wedding was this past weekend, Easter weekend, and it, it was over in Destin. So, and you know, I have this love-hate relationship with Destin. I absolutely love Destin itself. I absolutely hate the traffic and all the people there, but Destin is such a cool place. So I, I, I'm gonna share some pictures from this wedding because this is special. This, I, I told the folks afterwards, I said, they I got some compliments to me about it. it went well. I said, well, I said, you look at it one or two ways. I said, if you're a pessimist, you can say, that's the worst uh, wedding ceremony that guy's ever done. Or you can say that's the best wedding ceremony a guy's ever done to be telling the truth both ways because I've only done one. So anyway, I'm gonna, I am gonna hope I don't bore y'all with these pictures, but it's part of life itself. And Brendan's one of my former outdoor students and I, I used to, uh, just some really cool stuff. So I'm gonna start, first of all, this is where, uh, this is where the, okay, right here, this is, uh, De that's the Destin Bridge. So we're in this big old, ho big old uh, hotel there at the foot of Destin Bridge. and I. This is a rehearsal. I'm just fascinated, as you would guess, with the boat traffic. Oh, man, they're coming. I mean, where are all these people going? And then I walk down there to the boardwalk, and that fishing fleet's been there forever. And they tied in with it. You know, they still such a great history and heritage of the Destin St. Andrews fishing folks. They, their family intermarried, and they knew each other so well way back in the day. So, uh, and I saw this poster. Isn't that cool right there? They had this poster, a big old thing. It's six foot tall. November 5th, this is their uh, 28th annual Take a Kid Fishing. 
when I want to go on a little trip and all, I just go all over the place and try to find some good stuff. And this is old Lady M. This is at the inside of the, one of these restaurants. Uh, Captain, the Beebe family. Well done. I couldn't help but laugh at a big old deer mount here, right here on the water. And the King Michael tournaments they have, the rodeos and just real, the atmosphere just always good. So anyway, so anyway, they were, it was right there, a big old hotel right there. And then uh, right there in that big old patio area was where it was. So it was a beautiful setting for a wedding. The young, okay, here the young man she married. Uh, this is Brittany Davis, and this is David Postman, originally from uh, Seattle, Washington, a graduate of Naval Academy. And, this, and Brittany's a nurse now. I'll just go through the pictures pretty fast. What a sweet group of uh, people, and the Naval Academy, all those guys, his best men and all, going to the Naval Academy and had all these things here. And it was such, I told him, the bridesmaids after the meeting, I told them I was going to allow them one picture with me, and they better look pretty on it. So uh, they, it was a great time. And three of those girls were in my class, uh, the two blondes and redheads, well, and one in the back. Uh, anyway, they were sweet girls. And here I am officially signing, that she's now officially married, and there's our picture at the reception and all. But what a, uh, I just want to share that with you. What, what a wonderful time. We're talking about doing, doing good things and all, but what a special time. And like I say, he's going to live in, they're going to live in San Diego for, for uh, six months and be deployed later. But uh, uh, I wish him the very best. We had a very, very strong, uh, a very strong ceremony. I want to show you one more thing, this, because we ended up with this. During the ceremony, this is, this is a cord of three strands. And he actually, David actually built this box. He's a woodworker. And I picked out one verse in the Bible to, uh, I had several verses I, I quoted, but this right here, uh, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor, lay them down. And uh, anyway, if one falls down, you can help them up. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. And they did, they wove it around and with God in the center. And that's in Ecclesiastes 4. Ironically, I picked out that verse to, uh, to read them also, and they, she, he'd already had it graded. And this is a ceremony. I, I ended with, uh, this is my, I left them the, ser the book, the wedding book for them, and I left, uh, I, I'm gonna share this with you because I felt so close to them. To David and Brittany, it's been an honor to perform your wedding ceremony. I so enjoyed meeting such warm, friendly, and interesting people. I wish you the very best in your marriage. You two are such a wonderful couple, and the future is bright for you. Keep your faith strong and always trust in the Lord. Love you, Coach Chester. So, anyway, that's some, that's some good stuff. I want to share it with you because I know some of y'all uh, would, would appreciate that. So, let's take a break and be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our fishing game time brought to us by Blue Water, Blue Water Outriggers there in uh, Port St. Joe. Our time, we're looking at 619 to 819 this morning and this evening, 648 to 848. Bubba Phillips, uh, he, uh, he's sent me a lot of pictures over the years, a very big outdoorsman, and lives up at Deer Point Lake, right, right next door to Travis Bassford, and lives next door to Bubba, because Bubba was there first, and uh, he lets Travis's kids fish off his dock, and Bubba just, the Phillips boys were just a bunch of good guys, and uh, he sent this, he said, good evening, Coach Chester, I videoed this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read, I videoed this at the Florida State Caverns in Mariana, Tonight, and it would be cool to put it on your show. You can edit out the sound when I was talk, talking, if you want to. Really, the sound won't show up. It said, quick, this is some bats coming out. I'm going to play it a couple times, okay? Let me see if I can. Let's see, would it show up better that way? Nope. Okay, it went way back. Hold up, that's Bubba back when I played football. Uh, okay, let me turn it this way. No, it's not, it's not going to work that way. All right, so give me time. This is a, all right, here we go. We're just gonna leave it right here and play it, okay? Here we go. There you go, okay, now. Okay, so watch the bats. See the bats coming out the bottom? <laughs> there the kids jumping up and down. Boom, there comes some more. Boom, 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 and they're flying away. That's it. <laughs> it wants some more to come out. It's amazing when they start hatching that when it comes out. I wanna play one more time. So look at the bottom down there and see what's, Okay, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Look at them just piling out. They're sort of halfway falling, but they get their wings and some of them fly right up toward the camera. Is that not nature, raw nature at its finest? I just, okay, I just, I just love that. I, you know, I was thinking yesterday we had TC and Ben Steele, and we're talking about having, you know, real people on our show, and I think those two guys are, are real people. Uh, here, Bubba, this is real nature here. 
uh, I get I get really excited sometimes thinking about all the things we're able to do on our show that uh, that well some shows aren't able to do and I'm 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 never take that for granted. I'm very thankful of that. Uh, I have. I have several. I'm way behind. I was telling Jeff I'm way behind, so I'm going to uh, try to get caught up. But anyway, I wanted to show you. I don't have time to get into this. I want to show you the uh, the boat traffic coming in and out of Destin uh, I, because it's such a great fishing village. But uh, let me see. Anyway, this is looking back. I just wanted the amazing. This was all sand dunes at one time, and I'm standing on that patio looking back toward you know the, that's the harbor, looking back in the eastward direction and the boats are just pouring in. I said I had a video of it here, but okay, I've already, I've shown that, but let me see. But I wanted what I wanted to share with you was so many boats coming in there. Uh, okay, here it is right here. So uh, that boat right there, look at that boat right there, cool that, that little pontoon. I mean, I started looking around and, and they have every little nook and cranny has a boat, some kind of boat in it, and they have jet skis and, and kayak rentals and just, it's all kind, of, but it's constantly moving. I was there a couple of hours and it was just constantly moving with boat traffic. Okay, here, here's some of it here. And this, this is a dolphin tour. And this was like five o'clock in the afternoon, I think. Yeah, this is around five, yeah, around five o'clock. And just loading the people up, like little dinner cruises. And, and I, I was just amazed they were able to get this many people uh, in and out of there. So that's, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that's all good. And like I say, it's a love-hate relationship with, with that area, but it's, it's remarkable uh, they, can, they can get that many people in there. I have several other things I want to go over. One, we were talking last week about the lifespan of, of fish, and I, I did some research. I didn't get to squeeze it in last week. I'm going to get started back on. I got a whole chart of the lifespan of, of different fish. And it's really, you know, Travis was here last week. We're talking about the lifespan of a pompano, around around six years, uh, five to six years. So I, I looked up some more, and here we go. I'm gonna, we're going to get some. This is a, a bass. Let's look. At, we'll go get started on this. I, I really don't have time, but I do want to look at the bass. Most people don't realize a bass will live this long, 15 to 23 years, and especially if it's in good, good warm water, and it can uh, can live through the the diseases and all, largemouth bass. And then one more in salt, in salt water. Now this is, the only barracuda I could find was in Pacific, but I'm thinking it's the same one here. The barracuda can live about 12 years. So uh, I'm, to, tomorrow, I mean, when I get back and do the show by myself, I'm gonna finish up looking at all these different uh, lifespans of fish. It's really interesting. So if you got some good pictures, y'all send them in. I've got to catch up on some others. We'll, like I said, we'll have, uh, Mandy coming on tomorrow, and also Stephanie coming on talking about the latest Spanish Mackerel Tournament, the 27th annual here in Panama City. So we're proud of them doing it. Got to wrap it up. Thank you all for watching our show. Do something good today for your fellow man. Have a great day. Enjoy the outdoors. Take care of it, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.